energy and power are two related but very different things. What I'd like to do now is show the difference using the battery energy storage system as an example. We'll call it a BESS for short. On the left is the battery and on the right is the power converter. This takes the direct current from the battery and changes it into alternating current or vice versa. It can take energy from the power grid and convert it to direct current. Once again I'm using a one-line diagram. In reality this is a three-phase system and there are three wires headed out to town and there are at least two connections to the battery. From the plant operator's perspective there's only a few things that you need to know about this BESS including health, energy, and power. When you look at your screen the health will be indicated by green or it'll go red like so. So right now I'm coloring the battery in as red and coloring the power converter as red. A quick sidebar if I may, if you ever find yourself in a position to design systems such as this please don't limit yourself to red-green. That would be discrimination against the folks who are colorblind and can't differentiate between the two colors. And now let's go back to our plant operator. So the system is healthy and green and the plant operator will want to know what the energy content of the battery is. I'm going to use an old-school analog gauge to show this. Just like the fuel tank on a car, the energy can either be gone, which is to say the battery or tank can be empty, or it can be full. Again, this is a measure of energy. We can quantify this, and instead of saying empty, we could say that the battery has zero energy. And when it's full, for our particular system, we said that it's 277 kilowatt hours. Units are very important here. Notice that we have a product of power, which is watts, and time, which is hours. The last thing we want to know is the power. If you're an observer looking at the converter, perhaps the system is idle, in which case the power flow would be zero. Or maybe the battery is supplying power to the town, in which case we could have power from zero up to max forward. Or maybe the energy is going the other way and we're charging the battery, in which case we could have from zero all the way up to max reverse. Now earlier we find the maximum forward power of our best to be 8 megawatts. And for a variety of reasons the maximum recharge rate, which is to say the maximum reverse, will likely be less. So let's assign a value such as 200 kW. Once again, notice the units. For energy, we had kilowatt hours, and now for power, we've got megawatts. Recall that energy is the product of power and time. So we could, for example, figure out how much time it takes to charge the battery. Let's assume the battery was completely discharged. In that case, we must provide 277 kilowatt hours worth of energy. And we defined the maximum rate that we can charge the battery as 200 kW. And time is what we're looking for. When we solve this, we see that time is equal to approximately 1.4 hours. That's how long it would take to charge a completely dead battery. We could also figure out how long it takes to discharge the battery. Let's assume the battery was completely charged when we started, so there would be 277 kWh. and the maximum discharge rate is 8 megawatts and I said rate that is how fast the energy is flowing out of this system once again we're looking for time in this case time 
if you work it out, would be about two minutes. So in summary, when we're talking about energy and power with regards to our BESS, we could say that energy is a description of the charge in the battery, how much energy it's able to deliver. Power, on the other hand, is a description of how fast that energy is being pushed into or out of the system. You should know that there are additional things that the plant operator might be looking at. With regards to the output of the converter, they might want to know the voltage, the current, the real power. The real power was the focus of this video. You recall that was P, and it was measured in units of watts. Now here's a new term, and that is reactive power. I mention this now because these two terms are very important to us, and we'll spend a lot of time exploring the differences in the relationships between these two.